Hello everyone and I hope you're doing well. Today we've been playing the Tri event in Marsador, which is the Xyz Fusion and Synchro kind of battle to see who comes first. Now at the moment, I don't know if you know the score, but Xyz is doing very poorly. The others are about 35% and uh, the Xyz is at 30. So I thought I'd do my best to try and up those numbers. Now, is this the best deck for upping the numbers? Probably not, but I've made a pile of a few decks that I love and mashed them together. Now, I won't spend too long on the deck profile because I can understand if you don't want to copy this list. This is an interesting list, but there are some fun games coming up. We have Ash Blossom, we have Gleef, so we have a whole Stromberg package in here, so that's uh, Stromberg. We also have a Kashtira package in here, so we have three Rise Heart, and then we also have Bestials. We have a bit of everything, I told you. Saranir, Juris Worm. Uh, but then we've got some more Kashtiras. We've got Fenrir, Unicorn, Ogre, and Scareclaw Kashtira. Just for big boys, pretty much. This deck is all about just summoning big dudes and just winning. We have three Hexitrude, which also classifies as a big dude. We can special summon it off the Stromberg, which is nice. Uh, we also have a bunch of rank 8, so that can go really well. So, same reasoning with Bigfoot. It's a free special summon, and it's rank 8. Thunderbird, free special summon, rank 8. Alpha, similar, but it has a really good removal effect, and the removal effects on these are decent as well. We have a bunch of thrust targets. We have Dark Hole, Regeki, Harpy's Feather Duster, Card Destruction because it triggers our dangers and it can unbrick our hand. Monster Reborn because, well, in this format you might as well. Change of Heart, uh, yeah, same same reason as Monster Reborn. Trade In, we have a bunch of level 8, so we can just pitch those and draw some. Pot of Desires, we don't care about banishing 10 because that's what Stromberg does anyway, so we're fine with banishing more. Two Lightning Storm, a Triple Tactics Talent, three Cash Tira Theosis for if we draw any of our Cash Tira monsters, three Triple Tactics Thrust, three Golden Castle of Stromberg, which is an insane card. We also run Pressure Planet Wraith Soft, two Cash Tira Birth, two Call by the Grave, a Cross Out Designator, three Evenly Matched, and three Infinite Impermanence. Pretty much most of this deck is going second and just breaking the opponent's board because a lot of the time in the events when you break a board it people can see so that that's my main strategy here but also you can win some games with these funny cards up here and for the extra deck we have one heartland draco this looks interesting but this is simply for the drag lubion into hope harboring alliance it's a brand they banned numeron dragon so we can't use that Draco Sack because rank 7, same with Red Eyes Metal Flare Dragon. Titanic Moth is a rank 7 that lets us go into Zeus fairly easily. Shanga Era and a Rise Hub for the Cash Tira package. This is for just general rank 8, but also for Draglubion. This is to stop any graveyard decks. There are some T Element players going out there, so this can be quite good. Digging Gear Suit is just, you can't not include him if you can make a rank 8. Draglubion, as covered, goes into our Harbringers. And then we have Pain, Gainer, and Seven Sins, so that we can scale all the way into a format Zeus at pretty much any opportunity. So this was our deck, and uh, let me show off a couple of replays, and uh, show you how it works. Going into our first game, our opponent doesn't do too well this game, but it does show off what this strange concoction of cards can do. We're going second, which is ideal, and our opponent literally just sets one monster and passes, which leaves us plenty of room to work with. We top deck the Pressure Planet, which is brilliant. We'll add the Kashiri Unicorn to hand, and we'll special summon it and attempt to use its effect. It will Ash Blossom here, which is interesting, instead of the Field Spell, because now we can use our Unicorn effect to banish one card from his extra deck once this all resolves. We're going to go for the Barone. It just seems like the best bet. We'll go for Cash Tira Theosis on the Unicorn, grab the Fenrir. Fenrir will go and grab Rice Heart. Rice Heart will special summon itself, and then we'll go into Shanga Era. You've probably seen this line a million times before. We'll go Rice Heart effect. Unfortunately, we don't run Birth, so... Uh, Big Bang, so we have to banish the Ogre. We'll go Shang effect and then use the planet to pop because we use Shang, and then we'll go into a Rice Heart. Now, what awaits us is a nib, but he'll never expect this follow up. Because we still have Golden Castle, we'll activate Golden Castle, replacing the Castor Fuel Spell. We'll use Golden Castle's effect to special summon Hexitrude from deck. Hexitrude will use this effect to pop the Nibiru and pass the turn. So, not the best end board, but considering we literally got Nibiru, there's best we can do. He goes into Ecclesia to bring out Sword Soul of Moye, revealing the Golden Sword Soul from hand to special summon the Sword Soul token. Going into Shishao, and uh, he's going to use the Shishao effect 
chain link to Moye to draw one card. I hate how long the chain resolution is <laughs> He has Long John to hand. Long John will discard the emergence to special summon itself and a token, using the two tokens to go into however you say this guy. Using the Long John to burn me, and now he's got two monsters, but he does attack into Stromberg, but will negate it with the sinister sword saw. That's what I'm going to call this guy. Which is unfortunate, but he still can't kill the Nib token, so we're currently okay. So pass it back to us. Let's see what we can do. The evenly matched aren't doing much this hand. That Monster Reborn is going to come in clutch, though. Let's use the Monster Reborn on the Arise Heart to bait out the negation here. So we thought it was a negation, but it was not. It just pulls it back and burns me. But then he's going to use the effect to banish the Arise Heart, which is fine. Because now we can go into the Danger Thunderbird and switch this Nib token to attack. Let's just go straight into battle here. He's going to use the Golden Sword Soul to prevent me from killing the Sinister Sword Soul. We'll kill the Golden Sword Soul with the Thunderbird. And then we'll go pop Desires in main phase 2. We'll go for the Triple Tactics Talent that we top decked, which is really, really nice. We're going to go for the Shi Shao, and then because it's a rank 8, we can go into Dingirsu, which is nice, and clean up the rest of his board. Currently, it looks like we're in a very much winnable position. Considering he set 1 on turn 1, he's done really well this game. He's going to go into Takatomborg, and then special summon Red Eye... Re Red Eyes? <laughs> Another Speedroy card, but it doesn't matter, because he's dead. Yeah. The fact that we can just go, oh, okay, you disrupted our Kashtira plays. Yeah, here's, here's a castle for you. It's a really, really silly strategy, but it's Going fun. into game two, we're going second once again. We have drawn one of the Kashtiras, but it's Ogre, and because we don't run a trap, it's not that great. But it's a free special summon. He's going to normal summon Hanzo. We're going to Ash the Hanzo here, because we don't really want him getting anything off. But unfortunately, he does have the Mitsu and the field spell in hand, using... Those two ninjas go into the battle ninja. There he is, and then using the field spell to add the hands over back to hand. Pretty scary first turn, especially with this guy who can like flip two dudes. But uh, we drew into a Theosis, which is pretty brilliant. Kashtira Ogre will special summon. We'll go for the Theosis. He's going to go for the battle ninja to special summon a ninja to his field. Apologies, this is the one that flips two face down. We'll go into the Scare Core Kashtira. Kashtira Ogre will activate, but he will flip both of these face down and then chain the Hidden Village, which will bring back another ninja to hand. It's got a pretty good resource loop going, so it's a little bit scary, but I think we can still work our way out of this. Kashtira Ogre's effect will still resolve. He re reveals a Super Poly, Imperm, and the Ninja card, so he's banished the Inarchetype one. We'll go for Triple Tactics Thrust, because he activates a monster effect. Tribute Summon Hextrude. Go for Raigeki to destroy the rest of the board, and then let's just swing. Let's just hit him with a big lady. Mr. Fentmaxer, it is your turn now. Uh, we do have an evening match, which is probably the best card to have the last card in your hand. It's going to summon the Hanzo again and then use the Field Spell to add back the Big Boy. He flips to the Gravity Ninja. He's going to add that back to hand and then use the Hanzo effect to add a Ninjitsu Art card from hand to deck. Uh, from deck to hand. We've got the Notebook, which is probably one of the best ones. He's going to go for the Notebook to bring back the Battle Ninja in face down defense position and the Ninjitsu Art of Dancing leaves. He's going to go for the Super Poly. Discarding an effect failure using Hexitrude and the face down to go into Dragus Topelia. Pretty good. He's cleared everything I have, but the one card I have left in hand has to be evenly matched. We'll go for evenly matched at the end of the battle, and he's going to keep the Dragus Topelia, which is fine by us, depending on what we top deck. Alpha Master of Beasts. Now that's a good one to top deck. We'll special summon it because he has more attack than us. He'll use his effect to negate it, but that's fine. We can just kill it by battle anyway. So we'll just do that and then pass back because that's all we have. Let's see, does he have anything for Alpha? Apparently not. I think because we banished the other ninjutsu art, he, Hanzo doesn't do anything. We'll go for Kashtira Birth, which is an amazing top deck, and he can see. Yeah. <laughs> Even we, we saw some Kashtira, but most of it was carried by Alpha. Okay, going into game three. Yes, we have drawn Unicorn again. Yes, this helps a lot. But we're against Super Heavy, so we need everything we can use. I'm going to fast forward through his combo a little bit because we all know how this goes. He's just going to vomit a million things onto the board and then, you know, end with like 10 Synchro Monsters. There's the first. Literally the first. That is in his name. 
So he's going to pen summon. He's going to go into this phantom of the Yang Zing. He is using spells and traps in Super Heavy, which is very, very interesting. It does shut down some of his plays. He summons Tyre, which is another interesting play going into Baxia. He's going to do... What's he doing? What's he doing? He's going crazy. He's going beast mode. Yeah, he's... There's Chaos Angel. There's she shall. Have you got any more? Of course you do. Because you're running sword, so it adds a long john, long john effect. Bring him out and a token, and guess what? It's broke. How the hell are we gonna break this board? Well, this hand certainly does it. Especially with that top deck. We're gonna go trade in to bait out some form of negate pitching the hexatrude. He's gonna ash blossom, which is a shame. I really wanted him to use the barone here, but that's fine. We got some piece of negation out of the way. Then we'll go for the Lightning Storm for attack position monsters to bait the Barone, which works splendidly. Now all he has to worry about is this Raigeki that's coming down, and yes, that will resolve and kill everything on the board. And now we have a clear board after he added a Tudor from deck. We can go for the Caster Unicorn. He's going to impermit, so it really didn't do much work this game, unfortunately. We'll attempt to go for it anyway, because I love doing that in Master Duel. Give a Triple Tactics talent to rip that Ecclesia back out of his hand, back into the deck, and then we'll just go battle and swing for 25. Now, we're at a very even game state, it's very much top deck walls at this point, although if he doesn't get rid of this Kashira Unicorn, I can use it next turn. He's going to go for the Vishoda, we're going to banish the Pendulum Monster, because why not? He's going to use the Vishoda and an Adhara to go into another Shishao. He's going to add the Soul Soul Blackout, hello, person jump scare. Uh, he's going to attack into my Kashira Unicorn and kill it, which is a shame. Let's see what we draw off the top. A Jurisworm? Isn't terrible, but it's not doing much for us here, so we'll just hold on to it and pass the turn. He's going to set what I assume is the blackout. We're going to banish the fish shutter to special summon Jewish Worm on attack declaration so that when he kills it, we can kill the she, she shower and send that to grave. Now we're back on top deck wars. What card are we going to... Just the best card of the deck, you know? Best card? We'll just bring back the Barone. Bring back your Barone. Yeah, this card should be banned. I wonder why the TCG hasn't done that yet. We bring back the Barone, we use this effect to pop the set card, which was the blackout. We'll just go straight to battle and deal 3000 and pass back. Bear in mind Barone still has his negate, so if he tries to do something, he could be pretty fucked. Instead, he opts to do nothing, and we'll do exactly the same. He attempts to effect failure, but why would I negate it? There's not much reason to. We'll go for the Golden Castle, because why not? And there's the last card that we don't have to worry about. That was Ash Blossom out the way. No cards on field. No cards in hand. Just go straight for face and win against this weird super heavy samurai hybrid. Pretty good, I would say. So a quick overview of the deck. Whilst it's not helping XEs get all the way to the top, I think it was a really, really fun list and a cool event as well. I really do like the idea. I also love that they didn't include Lynx because they knew that Lynx would probably just win when they have stuff to like access to like access code. That was a hard sentence to say. So overall, it was a really, really fun event. It was quite a grind, but this was a good list. I'm always happy to play Stromberg. The weaknesses are Nibiru. I tried to play Kashtira, and because there's no Max C in this event, everyone was running Nibiru, so I just got nibbed and had no follow-up, which is why I decided to splash the Kashtira engine into another deck, which can follow up after Nibiru. What I will say is this deck is quite bricky. It's a 60-card deck with not many draw cards. The best draw card we have is Trade-In, and that is just an Ash Magnet, and the other card is Pot of Desires. We usually have Prosperity and stuff, but that's banned for the event. Another downside is this is incredibly expensive if you don't already have the cards. Luckily, I have crafted all these cards previously for other decks. I'll chuck those in the description if you do want to see the full 60 card Golden Castle or my Going Second Castura build. But yeah, I, I think if you don't have all these cards and you want to play the event, there's definitely more budget options for you. But if you want a fun, fun time, these cards are worth it. Come on, XZs, I know you can do it. Ignore my 10 points in fusion. I'm not a traitor, I swear. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far in the video, please do feel free to hit subscribe. New Yu-Gi-Oh! videos each week. And as always, happy dawn.